Okay guys, Francis Gray here and welcome back to part 2 of the uh, Godzilla kit build. Hello there guys, Francis Gray here and uh, welcome back to the next part of the Godzilla build. So as you can see here, this is the Atomic Raw Blast, which is an accessory that goes uh, along with the Godzilla kit. And uh, as you can see there, all parts have been moulded with a clear tinted blue resin. And uh, these parts I'm showing you right now, these are like the offshot, offshoot bits that are supposed to be flying out from the uh, explosion. So obviously we've got an armoured personnel uh, vehicle. Uh, or some kind of tank and uh, it's obviously Godzilla's uh, not took a liking to it and he's decided to uh, blow it up with uh, Atomic Blast so I was just pointing out a, a, seam, a seam line on that uh, on that part there and then in this part here we're basically just taking a fine sanding drill bit and I'm just gonna take uh, my time to go around and get rid of uh, all the seam lines. Now whenever you mould resin from a two part mould you will always get a seam line. Sometimes it's it's not really that much of a big deal and sometimes it can actually ruin a kit. It depends on uh, how old the moulds are and how good they were in the first place. So, uh, but in this in this case, it uh, it's not too bad. Especially to say it's translucent. Uh, I think they did a good job moulding it. But uh, it needs to be cleaned up regardless because it will stand out like a sore thumb. But with it being translucent, unfortunately, it does tend to like leave a, a like a scar, I suppose, going across. But. Uh, yeah, there's ways around that. There's ways that you can you can hide that later on, and I'll show you that in the uh, in the build later on. But at the moment, I'm just going ahead and I'm just getting rid of all the seam lines, and I'm just cleaning up any untidy bits. And uh, yeah, and then soon we can uh, start putting it all together. Okay, so at this point I'm going in with a uh, little bit bigger of a sanding uh, bit and I'm just taking off some excess resin on the bottom of some of these explosion parts. Uh, basically the, with the extra resin already there they wouldn't sit flush in the uh, holes provided. So yeah, I just needed to take my time and make sure it was nice and smooth and at this point I'm just using the same sanding bit and getting rid of uh, some of the uh, seam lines from when it was moulded. So these ones were a little bit more tricky so I had to go in with the hobby saw with uh, these ones because they're all being moulded on the same block of resin so usually find that with some like smaller parts Okay, so now we're on to the main atomic blast part. So there's uh, there's three of these uh, leading up to the main, uh, I suppose, the blast tank, bla well, the tank area, I suppose. So uh, so yeah, these didn't f all fit exactly flush. There was quite a bit of overhang resin in a few areas. So I, it was a little bit trial and error. I had to go in and grind a bit and then retest it and grind a bit and. Yeah, it was a bit tedious, but uh, all, all in all, it uh, all's well, it ends well.
Okay, so now we need to go in and we need to glue these parts together. So the best thing to glue resin is more resin. So I'm going to use a two-part epoxy and it's uh, just equal measures of part A, part B, mixed together nice and thorough and then uh, just apply it to the space. Now it does take about five minutes to fully harden so you want to find something to press both parts together and uh, you should, it should be locked tight after that. Uh, otherwise, you could easily, you know, make, like, dislodge it and then it could uh, glue and in a weird way. And the last thing we want is a wonky atomic blast. So, uh, so yeah, so I made sure that uh, all parts lined up and it all, it all glued really well. Okay, so for the next part, I went in with this stuff, which is a surface primer from uh, Vallejo, which is a airbrush paint. And uh, normally I use it as an airbrush paint, but uh, in this regard, we needed to paint the, the tank a metallic colour. But uh, I can't go in with like a, a spray can of grey primer, let's say, uh, without heavily masking off. The, uh, the 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 clear blue parts because obviously we want to keep that translucent. So uh, yeah, so the only way I could think about doing this part was uh, just go taking my time and just going in there with a uh, with a detailed uh, decent paintbrush and then just take my time and just paint up to the the line and yeah, just give it multiple coats and then it works just as good. Okay, so uh, the client wanted me to add some kind of light up lighting on the inside of the atomic blast. So I went out and bought these two items, which is a, basically it's a power bank, which is just you you attach it to the mains, you give it a good charge, and then it's got a USB connection on the top, and then the USB connection is obviously these lights. And uh, yeah, and then all you do is just turn it on via the remote control, and then you've got instant power. So uh, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the the key parts out. I'm going to see, make sure all the parts are there, and then uh, I need to start putting the parts together and uh, try and think of a way to incorporate them inside the actual blast. Okay, so at this point I, I found a piece of scrap wood that uh, was nice, long and thin and it's uh, the perfect diameter basically to stick the two parts of, uh, of these lights to either side and uh, yeah, and then uh, it's the, also the right size length for the inside of the, uh, the atomic blast as well. So yeah, so I just basically just uh, stuck the took the adhesive off the back, stuck them in place, and now I'm going in with some sellotape and I'm just adding some rows around just to keep it secure and in place because the adhesive on the back of these they're okay, but over time I've personally I've found them to uh, 
to degrade and, and basically just uh, come away and I don't want that to come away while it's housed inside such a delicate piece so yeah uh, just r regular translucent uh, sticky tape to the rescue Okay guys, so as you can see it does light up rather nice inside, but unfortunately the uh, the connection that they give you with the uh, with the end, as you can see there, that loop part, it just it's just it's too bulky and it's just takes up a lot of space at the end and it pushes the lights further down, which is not what I want. So as you see there I just uh, got rid of it. So I decided to make my own connection. So I just took one of those normal ties that you normally find that hold like electrical wires together. And uh, it's just like a sheet of plastic with inside a really thin wire. So, uh, so yeah, so it took me a while to get this out. It was very stubborn, just did not want to move whatsoever. But uh, eventually I got there. And this wire is the exact right diameter that I need for uh, to bridge this connection. So the connection ends is basically four little portholes, and uh, you just basically need to line them up. So I just cut the metal up into little strips, and then just bent the ends. So uh, I suppose it makes like a letter N, I suppose, or like like a unsquashed staple and uh, yeah and then just put them into place now this part was tricky because it seemed like you, you get one in there and then as soon as you make the other one the first one pops back out again and it was a little bit trial and error but uh, yeah I'm glad, to, I'm glad to say that it did work I was a bit skeptical for a, for a moment I thought oh, this is probably a bad idea it's probably not gonna work and if any of these metal parts touch you know it could uh, it could uh, maybe destroy the LEDs inside but uh, I took my time and made sure that no parts connected and uh, yeah and we'll make sure that not uh, that that's sealed later on so as you can see there works fantastic so I was over the moon at this point so the best way to secure it all and make sure that none of these parts touch is a good old uh, hot glue very simple but uh, very practical as well it, it uh, definitely works so it gets in between all the little uh, wires so yeah once it's hardened they'll never touch so yeah works a charm So for the next part, now that we've freed up the extra space at the end, as you can see there, the lights fit in more or less perfect. All, it goes all the way right up to the end, and uh, yeah, and then stops just as it uh, should be connecting to the uh, the main blast zone. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm really happy with how that turned out. Now in the video, they are changing multicolors. Now you could have that as an option, but. I decided to buy the lights where it comes with like a, a little remote control and you can preset what colours you want. So if you want it to be just like a turquoise blue, you just select that and then you are, or a mid-set blue or a deep blue or you could you could just flip it on its head and go yellow, green, whatever you, whatever colour you want. So uh, so yeah, so that should give uh, the client a little bit of an option. So at this point I had the idea of taking some cotton wool and then uh, just fraying it a little bit and then uh, basically just shove it on in there with a long stick and that would mask the individual lights because uh, I want it to look like it's, it's all one light or rather than individual little lights. So uh, yeah, if you put the cotton wool in there it does defuse the lights from being so vibrant on their own 
and it does blend it out and also the cotton wool kind of makes it look like there's like uh, some kind of chemical reaction going on inside and I just think it would look, look better all together and also it helps keep the the lights set in place rather than it, like just rattling around because I wanted to keep this bang on in the center if I can Okay, so as you can see there, guys, the uh, the cotton wool was a little bit too heavy on one end or one side. So it worked great on the front facing side, but when I flipped it over, as you can see, there's a big chunk that uh, has defused the lights. So that was my mistake. I should have uh, I should have not packed it in there as as tight. No. Yeah, operation. Uh, get the cotton wool out is a go. Okay, so I'm finally done. So, new idea. So instead of just ramming it all in there and hoping for the best I decided to uh, thin it out even more and uh, make sure it's it's in key places to defuse the light and then just basically hold it in place with uh, some of that wide uh, translucent sellotape so uh, yeah oh, <laughs> wish me luck Okay, so moment of truth. Now let's uh, test it on the inside of the resin. So, yep, I'd say that that was uh, diffused a lot more. It, uh, if anything, it makes it look like the lights are uh, doubled rather than uh, just single. So, nice little uh, little effect there. So, for the next part, now that the first layer of surface primer is dry, I'm going to go in with a second coat. So, yeah, really exciting stuff. Okay, so now that those two layers are dry, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add the first base layer of a uh, gunmetal silver to uh, as the first layer of metallic for the exploding armored vehicle. So yeah, so it's basically just made by same company uh, Vallejo uh, airbrush paints, but uh, obviously applied with a brush. Okay, so for the next part, now that we've got the main light sorted, I need to apply uh, the other two LED strips that came with the same kit to the inside of the main bulk explosion where the tank is. So and I decided to uh, just use or recycle an old orange juice uh, carton uh, or bottle if you like. Same again, translucent, and uh, took some measurements, took me time to cut out the, the path that I needed. And 
once trimmed it uh, worked out really nice so I'm just tidying some ends up with a sharp razor blade there so as you can see it fits in great so, uh, so yeah so for the next part I'm going to take those two different LED strips and we're going to apply them on the outside Okay, so let's attach it and make sure it's still working. So that's a good sign. Okay, so let's uh, test it with the uh, the main part on top. Works fantastic. Okay, so for the next part, it's the exact same idea as before. Just. Uh, regular white wool just stretched thin and then just uh, stuck in place with regular translucent sellotape Okay, so for the next part I'm going to use some of this translucent silicon and I'm just going to apply a load on the inside and then uh, place some on top of the, the, the new part that we've just made from the uh, juice packet and uh, just leave it probably about three days to fully uh, cure and then that should be uh, rock solid and still keep its translucency. days later okay guys so now that the silicon's nicely dried I'm just gonna go in with another uh, layer of uh, black wash and uh, gently wipe away the excess just basically gets into all the nooks and crannies and just adds a little bit of uh, shading to the uh, armored vehicle Okay, at this point I'm going in with a regular silver acrylic and uh, just applying a dry brush highlight over uh, the armed vehicle. So for the next part I need to go ahead and I need to add the uh, explosion extra bits that implies that the blast is moving outwards so what I've decided to do was just mix up some just regular epoxy resin uh, part A part B equal measures mixed thoroughly and uh, yeah just apply it to the bottom and slightly around the sides of the blast parts and then just uh, put them and hold them in place and you usually have to hold them for about three minutes and then uh, the epoxy uh, dries nice and uh, nice and tough and yeah and then just take your time and work your way around Okay, so now that we've got all the main blast parts attached and the glue is fully uh, cured, I need, for the next part I need to go ahead and I need to uh, connect the wires to make sure that both sides light up, as you can see there it uh, worked really nice. Then I need to feed the battery pack and all the wires on the inside and then I'm going to mix some more of the same epoxy resin and we're going to apply it in place and then we're going to try and secure it and hope for the best that uh, it cures in uh, its first go because I don't, really don't want this to go wrong because it, I can see it being a nightmare cleaning up 
uh, the resin if it goes wrong and then obviously with the blast being uh, like one-sided heavy it, uh, it does prove a, a little bit uh, of a problem so yeah plenty of uh, epoxy resin and uh, make sure it gets into all the little nooks and crannies of the connection and then uh, as you can see there get it the right way around and then uh, stick it in place and then I'm holding it for quite a long time just to make sure that the uh, resin has time to harden so at, the, at this point I'm resting up against the shelf and then uh, I left that overnight and then uh, I'm glad to say that uh, when I returned the next day, it uh, it fully cured, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the outcome. So for the next part, I'm going to go in with this stuff, which is a two-part uh, clear translucent epoxy uh, resin, which uh, it's uh, I think it's uh, 100 to 40 mix ratio. So uh, yeah, it's just measuring it out on the scales there, and then uh, took a long stirrer, and then it looks like I'm speed, I'm 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 stirring it pretty fast, but this is obviously speed up footage. Really, if you if you do it too fast, you trap air bubbles in there, and then you always have problems later on. So you've got plenty of working time. So I strongly suggest that you just stir it slowly, and then that limits the uh, bubbles in general. So. Early on in the video I talked about like a hideous uh, seam line where we cleaned up the seam lines with uh, a Dremel bit and I said I'll show you a, a, a trick later on to get rid of them. Well basically this is that trick so if you paint on translucent resin it uh, once it uh, dries and hardens or well even the second you put it on there it uh, just evaporates and disappears but when it does dry you don't see it no more. So. Uh, so yeah, so the things I have to worry about with this is uh, obviously the resin heats up pretty uh, pretty high temperatures, and I don't. And with this being heavy one-sided with the uh, blast raw, the uh, I don't want to accidentally heat up the other resin where we attached it before, and then it like it uh, falls over. So I'm painting all the parts now. I'm making, giving everything a one good coat. Making sure everything is, uh, is looks okay, and then I'm gonna have to leave it uh, at least overnight. I'll check it uh, the day after, but ideally, you probably want to leave it uh, two days to fully cure and fully dry before you go ahead and do anything with it. And then, uh, yeah, and then once dry, as long as it dries okay, you've got one unified piece. So, uh, so yeah, so hopefully tomorrow. I won't walk into the uh, workstation and it's in bits on the floor with, uh, you know, God knows what stuck to it. So, uh, yeah, wish me luck. Okay, so at this point I'm taking the last piece to uh, add to this, which is, uh, I suppose, like a sonic device or some kind of weapon that's uh, obviously been uh, destroyed and blown off the uh, armoured vehicle or the tank. So, uh, so yeah, so same again like we did with the other one. I'm uh, just giving it a base coat of uh, gunmetal and uh, leaving that to dry and then I'll go ahead and give it a black wash, wipe away the, ec the unwanted excess just to highlight shadows and then I'll probably give it a dry brush of uh, highlight silver over the top. And now that that's painted, uh, for the next part just uh, going in with the same two part epoxy resin, mixing it thoroughly and then just applying a really small part underneath because we don't want to overdo this and uh, just sitting in place and leaving it to dry. Okay guys, so now that that's glued in place we're going to go in with a metallic gold in the airbrush and I'm just going to add a basic foundation uh, base tone 
to uh, the the main bulk of the blast. Basically, with the atomic raw being blue and then it hitting the armored uh, vehicle, obviously the armored vehicle will be exploding with uh, various different chemicals and and whatnot. So that that will actually be uh, a different color in nature from the blue. So uh, so yeah. So I've started off with a rustic gold and. Uh, I'll add uh, some more highlights soon. Okay, so now that that's dry, I'm gonna go in with a regular yellow, which will just add a brighter vibrancy over the gold. And for the next colour we're going to go in with a medium orange. So at this point we're adding a little bit more of a chemical reaction uh, to the explosion. And for the next part we're going to go in with a medium red. And for the next part we're going to go in with some black to mimic some smoke. For one of the final stages, I'm going back in with the same gold colour that we started painting this with, just to add a little bit more of a metallicness to the uh, to the paint job. So one of the last things I did was I went over and gave it all a quick coat of gloss varnish, and then I think we're done. Okay, guys, so there it is, all done, all finished. Now I've had to leave the battery pack sticking out, just to show you there it's uh, part of the uh, build. But uh, there's the actual main explosion. And then we've got the, the light up atomic raw as well. So yeah, so all in all, I think this turned out really nice. So, uh, so yeah, so if you've enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and share on Facebook and Twitter because it helps new people find the YouTube channel, which I'm always appreciative. Thank you for your help. If you have any comments, comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on not only the next part of this, but future builds as well. So once again, I'm Francis Gray and this has been part two of the 24-inch Godzilla resin kit build. I'll see you in part three.